Super Mario Bros. Wonder is a game that, for the first time in a long time, gives us a truly fresh take on the 2D Mario platformer. Reading about the development of the game, it sounds like the team at Nintendo tried to step back and look at what made the original Super Mario Bros. so special, and implement those same concepts in a modern way, similar to the approach to designing Breath of the Wild a few years ago. The original mastermind behind both of these series' music, Koji Kondo, has gone on record talking about his approach to writing the music to the original Super Mario Bros. He tried to fit the music to match the rhythm and energy of the game, working in the cycle of writing music, implementing it, playing the game with it, and then rewriting the music again and again and again until it felt perfect. Since the beginning, music has always been a core part of the Mario games, not just an afterthought layered on to the background. Super Mario Bros. Wonder takes this principle and pushes it to new lengths that would have been impossible in 1985, and throughout the game there are a ton of joyful moments of musical interaction with the gameplay. The way the melody of the background music changes to be played by low brass when you turn into an elephant is hilarious, and the drum roll and cymbal crash that accompanies each of your ground pounds feels great every time you hear it. But the best and most playful of these interactions is the early level Piranha Plants on Parade. The level starts off with one of the game's many fun surprises as the piranha plant that comes out of the classic green pipe pops itself out of the pipe and starts waddling towards you on little green feet. This is delightful, and this early in the game, it's enough to make you think that this is supposed to be the surprise of the level. So it comes as an even bigger surprise when, after touching the Wonder Flower a little ways in, you're treated to a full-on musical number with singing piranha plants and choreographed moving pipes. This little song is, quite frankly, adorable, and today I want to break down what makes it sound so charming using facts and logic and music theory. There are a lot of ways that music can sound cute, but Piranha Plants on Parade forgoes ukuleles or accordions or laid-back grooves and goes for an upbeat charm by using the genre of the march, specifically the kind of early Disney music type of march that might accompany, say, a troop of woodland creatures cheerfully performing some task. The introduction to the song sets up the tune perfectly, showing off our Piranha Plant's beautiful singing voices with this classic barbershop quartet style buildup of a dominant 7th chord. This breaks into a rhythmic B chord sung all together before a bass walk-up brings us into the main accompaniment figure. This is such a charming way to introduce each core element of the song. The performers, the kind of traditional harmony we can expect, the march style, and even the approach to rhythm in the melody. We've pretty much summed up the piece in the first two seconds. The most important aspect of this type of march style is the accompaniment, the rules of which must be strictly followed. The bass line must plod along on the beat, alternating between the root and the fifth of the key. The bass must jump down to the fifth and bounce back up. Jumping up to the higher fifth just sounds completely wrong. The chords must fill in the offbeats between these bass notes to create that classic oompa rhythm that becomes the rhythmic engine driving the piece. And to lead us into a new section, the bass must jump down and walk back up with the classic 1567 back up to 1. There's something that feels very optimistic about this kind of accompaniment. It might be the bouncy feeling created by the rhythm, the straightforward nature of the 5 to 1 resolution, or maybe just the way it compels you to keep putting one foot in front of the other. After the groove is set up, a melody comes in that is just so charming and singable that you can't help but smile when you hear it, and a huge part of that has to do with the rhythm. The melody mostly consists of 8th notes, but includes a ton of these dotted 8th to 16th note flourishes, about one per bar. These emphasize the following beat, the 16th note propelling the melody forward to give the note that follows more weight. These also give the melody its bounce, its liveliness. Here, check it out.
If we remove these 16th notes and straighten the melody out to just 8th notes, you can hear just how much energy is lost in the otherwise identical arrangement. I know which parade I'd rather be a part of. Of course, a huge part of the charm of this piece is the piranha plants voices. These kinds of synthesized, goofy, nonsense lyric vocals are great at making music sound cute. The best examples of this come from Callum Bowen, known for his work on Snipperclips, Omori, Pikuniku, Poinpi, and a slew of other games with disgustingly cute music. But you may be more familiar with this technique coming from the songs of K.K. Slider or Cap'n from the Animal Crossing games. In any case, the sound of these piranha plant voices on their own project a playfulness that is super endearing. The melody is also arranged with the idea of a vocal group in mind, using a call and response style of writing where the melody is traded between unison phrases and phrases harmonized in thirds. We also get this great emphasized note on beat 4 leading into the last phrase of the section, like a big group oh, that makes landing on this last phrase feel super satisfying. The melody is pretty straightforward other than this call and response phrasing, made up mostly of arpeggios and stepwise walks between chord tones outlining the very basic, very functional harmony. But notice the chromatic neighbor tones used to embellish different notes throughout the melody. And by this I mean melody notes that quickly dip down a half step even if that takes them out of the original key and then jump back up to the original note. This is part of the melodic vocabulary of Mario music in general and adds to the exciting, goofy, fun atmosphere. In the tune's B section, the bass voice takes the melody while the harmonized upper voices interject with answering statements. These answering statements include the kinds of chromatic embellishments that I mentioned, dipping down from this D sharp and F sharp to a D and F, or C double sharp and E sharp, before moving back up to the original note then doing the same embellishment of the E and G sharp notes in the following bar. You see this kind of melodic language used all the way back in the original Super Mario Bros. theme and all over the series since then. While being clearly evocative of a specific style, Piranha Plants on Parade is still so deeply entrenched in the vocabulary of Mario music. It's just like Super Mario Wonder as a whole, taking in the spirit of what made Mario games special in the first place and twisting it into a new direction that feels fresh and exciting, simultaneously showing a deep respect and understanding of both the game's legacy and the players it's entertaining. The harmony for a march like this has to be simple to capture the right vibe, but Piranha Plants on Parade picks its moments to break away from the obvious. For this kind of march music, you want to mostly trade back and forth between the 1 chord, in this case E, and the 5 chord, B7. For a fresh color and a little more movement, you can jump to the 4 chord, A. Piranha Plants on Parade never misses an opportunity to lead into the 4 chord with a secondary dominant E7. A secondary dominant chord is a dominant 7th chord that's not built on the 5th of the key like normal, but rather built a 5th above whatever chord it's leading to, making that chord being led to feel like a point of rest even though it's not the home chord of the key. Using a secondary dominant to the 4 chord always sounds good, no matter what the genre or context of the music. And 
the big beat for lead in before the final phrase of the A section is emphasized by shifting to an F sharp 7 over A sharp chord, another secondary dominant borrowed from outside the key used to resolve to the following B chord. Finally, a big part of the charm of this music is how it interacts with the level as you play through it. This isn't a cutaway to a musical number, it's an opportunity to actually play through a musical number as Mario. The entire tune never strays from the pattern of emphasizing three big quarter notes in every other bar, and these big three notes are almost always accompanied with pipes around the level shifting, slamming down or shooting up in time with these hits. The level really feels like it's coming alive with this music. And to further the interaction between the music and the game, players who have no joy in their heart can kill most of the piranha plants to stop them from singing their parts. This was such a great use of an early level of the game, to set the tone and show the player what kind of surprises they're in for as they go through Super Mario Bros. Wonder. The game is so full of joy and charm, and I don't think that comes through more obviously than when you're watching the Piranha Plants on Parade. And if you enjoyed this video, consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.